The story begins in America, in the 46th state, that is Oklahoma, in a little city called Broken Arrow. Weird name, I know. It was called Broken Arrow by the native Indians between the 1830s and 50s who had been moved unwillingly out of Alabama to Oklahoma and has remained named Broken Arrow ever since. There you are. We're going to investigate the Bever family, specifically the two eldest kids, Robert and Michael Bever. The Bever family were a family of nine. Dad David, Mum April, then the kids. Robert 18, Michael 16, Crystal 13, Daniel 12, Christopher 7, Victoria 5 and Baby Autumn, age 2. Now, for all intents and purposes, they were an average family. Dad David was out at work all day as an IT worker and Mum April was a stay-at-home mum, even homeschooling the kids. They weren't a sociable family. In fact, April and David would try and shield their kids from society. They didn't go to neighbourhood barbecues or gatherings. You see, the thing is, when you're homeschooled, you would usually go and meet other homeschooled kids have a wee cinema dates together, play dates, maybe even a wee football or netball team. This is so the kids that are homeschooled don't lose out on social skills. But it just wasn't the case for the Bever family. No groups or associations ever had any interactions with them. The kids would be seen out playing in their own backyard and only with each other. David and April wanted to protect their kids from the outside world. Robert would actually testify, stating that they never thought we were good enough and wanted us to do better. David was often overheard shouting at the kids, always telling them to get indoors, to come away from other kids. He would often scold Michael for his speech impediment and would refuse to engage in conversation until he could speak properly. Robert would also testify that his parents locked themselves away in their offices, that there were locks all over the house. He said his mum didn't teach them and would instead find websites for them to learn from. So how many siblings were self-educated? He also says he was the only one to go to school outside of the home. This was preschool and that he was so was pulled back out again. This seemed to be the reason for April and David's decision to homeschool Robert and this would move on to their other kids that came along. Remember, April and David wanted to protect their kids from the world, yet all of them were allowed a computer. They wanted their kids to be computer savvy, computer whiz kids if you will. So there was very few restrictions on anything to do with computers really. Robert and Michael alone had two laptops each. It would later transpire that Robert hated society and wanted to be famous for killing the most people in history to be the biggest killer to ever live. His heroes were all serial killers. Killers like John Wayne Gacy, Ted Bundy, Richard Ramirez and the Columbine killers. He was even heard around the house shouting, I'm going to do a Columbine! Michael looked up to his big brother, as we brothers do. Being the eldest two, 
they were close and done everything together. They would play Minecraft, loved cars, made a couple of YouTube skits. They were terrible. And also had a morbid fascination and At 18, Robert was allowed a job. He worked in a religious call centre where he would give advice and pray with callers. This meant Robert had money to burn, but nowhere to burn it. So he would start taking his wages out of the bank and keeping them under his bed with a notebook to keep a tally. He starts ordering knives online and after this he orders with fess for both himself and Michael. The boy's sister, Crystal, the eldest of the youngest five, she's only 13, can see what her brothers are doing and raises the alarm to mum April. But April would just shrug it off, saying the boys are just being boys. Robert would then start buying guns, getting them delivered to the local store so as not to arouse suspicion because Robert was already plotting in his head a killing spree. One night, Robert would sit Michael down, tell him about his plans about the guns, that he wanted to go on a killing spree and become the most famous serial killer to ever live. The plan was to head to Washington, stopping at every gas station, every shop robbing and killing the entire way, like Bonnie and Clyde. In order to do this, Robert would explain to Michael that they had to kill the whole family first, as Robert had already ordered ammunition, but it had to be delivered to the home. It couldn't be delivered anywhere else. In his brain, this meant killing his dad, so they wouldn't see the whole coming through the front door. And he might as well start the way he means to go on, so the entire family would be the beginning. And the beginning would be the night before the arrival. They decided that Robert would kill Mum April first, while Michael would Crystal and Victoria. They would then both go David and Baby Autumn. Then Robert would go down and kill Daniel and Christopher. The plan didn't materialise in this way. Crystal would recount. She went to Robert and Michael's room to tell them they would come and do the dishes. As she walks in, Robert and Michael are dressed in combat gear and there's nothing all over the bed. Michael looks at Robert and says, Shall we do it now? Robert simply replies, Yeah. Michael then asks Crystal to come look at something on his computer, so she walks over and has a look. This is when Robert comes up behind her and cuts her throat. The boys were convinced this way would silence her the quickest, but it didn't. Crystal starts screaming and drops to the floor. Michael keeps screaming her to shut her up. This alerts Mum April, who comes rushing in to see what's wrong. Robert turns his attention to his mum and giving Crystal the chance to escape making it all the way to the driveway before collapsing. She hears her mother screaming, call the police, while being stabbed to death in the kitchen. Robert will later testify his mother prayed for him while stabbing her. Robert then comes out and drags Crystal back into the house, leaving her in the entrance hall and closing the front door. This is where Crystal plays dead. Michael then goes to the bathroom where he knows the younger kids are hiding. So Michael starts acting afraid outside the door, convincing them to open the door so he can hide with them. When the door is open, he finds Christopher and Victoria and snaps them both to death. Turning to his dad's study door, he knows Daniel's in there. What he doesn't know is, Daniel's found Michael's mobile phone and is at this very moment on a call to 911. Daniel lets him in while on the 911 call. His family, he hears Michael calling for help on the other side of the study door, but Michael's using the same ruse he used before. Daniel lets him in while on the 911 call. Hello? Oh. Hi, where are you at? Broken out, Oklahoma, 7411. What address? 709 Magnolia Court. 7, okay. Are you the only one there? No. My brother's attacking my family. Your dad is attacking your family? 
police interrogation he says he grabs Daniel and hands him over to Robert Michael says hello on the phone then goes to the kitchen and smashes it up while Robert keeps stabbing Daniel but Daniel somehow breaks free and makes it as far as the living room before collapsing and dying on the living room floor this is when David wakes up and runs down to find Robert stood with a knife in blood he runs at him but Robert turns the knife towards his dad plunging it into his chest Robert testifies. He asked me why I was doing this. I replied, I must. And he just then said, you don't have to do this. These would be David's last words. Robert kicks Crystal a few times with his steel toe caps and is happy and confident everyone is now f***ed. He looks over to Michael, laughing as if to say, what the f*** we did it? Almost immediately the door chaps, convinced it's a neighbour, the boys leg it out the back door through the woods and hide beside a creek behind the house. But it's not a neighbour, it's the police, alerted by the brave phone call Daniel made. Because nothing much happens in Broken Arrow, they only have one homicide every two years, all the emergency services were sent out. Police, firefighters, canine units and ambulance services, they were all on scene in a matter of minutes. The police can see the blood all over the driveway and try to gain access but the front door is locked. They then hear a faint voice call, help me. The door is then kicked clean in then and there and they find Crystal alive on the hall floor. They carefully pick her up and can thankfully take her to immediate medical help. They re-enter the house, finding bodies as they sweep, first coming upon Daniel on the living room floor. They can see the beast, so they carry on past in case anyone else might be alive like Crystal was. They come to David and April in the kitchen, also deceased. April will later be found to have been stabbed repeatedly in the neck, head, arms and chest, 48 times in total. David is found with 20 stab wounds in the chest, neck and head. Sweeping past to the bathroom, they find Victoria and Christopher. Victoria will be found to have 23 stab wounds, Christopher 21. But in the last room, quiet and content, was two-year-old baby Autumn. She must have slept through the whole thing which undoubtedly saved her life. Michael would later tell police, and I quote, We totally forgot about Autumn, because the plan was to decriminate her, for effect, I guess. The boys were found in the woods behind the house, where they had hidden. Robert comes out willingly, smiling about his handiwork, while Michael, he resisted, so the canines gave him a helping hand, first by ripping his vest off, then dragging him out from the rocks and debris he had scurried under. As the boys are cuffed, Robert would shout while smirking, It's been a pleasure! I'm proud of what I've done! Robert first pleads not guilty, citing insanity, but when handed a plea deal, which would take the death penalty off the table, he took it. But more importantly, it would mean Crystal wouldn't have to take the stand. Knowing Michael always followed his brother, he was handed the same deal. Michael surprisingly didn't take it and pleads not guilty, 
pleading insanity and that his brother forced him into this or he would have killed him too. This means Crystal will testify. Robert was handed five life sentences to be served consecutively with no possibility of parole. Michael was found guilty of five counts of first-degree murder and 28 years for the attempted murder of Crystal also to be served consecutively. As Michael was only 16 when the murders took place, he does have the chance of parole. The Bever family home lay empty with authorities not knowing what to do with it, a constant reminder for the neighbourhood. It would suspiciously be set on fire, but no one was ever convicted for the arson. The community, they were just glad it was gone. Crystal and Autumn have been adopted by the same family and are growing up together. The locals decided to come together and build a memorial in the house's place, so residents could have somewhere peaceful to contemplate. They called it Reflection Park and it is dedicated to the members of the Bever family who were killed and the first responders who arrived at the scene. So what do you think? Could Michael have done more? Would Robert have killed him too? Or should Michael have got a lighter sentence even? Let me know in the comments. We'll have a wee chat. Right, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming to see me. But this is my wee time out. So... Be kind to one another. We're all human. Legs to hold you close, but never hold you near. Your grandma of understanding hangs the flowers in her hall. And her life seems so demanding. She's just gone out with it all. Given up on love for coffee and TV. Lisa set her up, but never sets her free.